I am here, I promise my model is not loading. Hold on, let me let me see what's up. Uh, but what do they call it when it rains it pours <laughs> there's the delay and now my model is not here hello hello i am i am definitely here i am talking to you it is me hi how are you doing oh there we go ah This working? Yes, okay. Whew. YouTube Studio didn't load. I didn't realize. Hello, I am here now. Yes, hi. Good day. Hi, hello. Yes. Um, Talk Tuesday again. Hooray. Yes, hello. <laughs> um So yeah, I am uh we are once again back with some Talk Tuesday. And I am completely disorganized because I had a very strange day, um, very messed up schedule. But hopefully that's, uh, that's gonna be, uh, gonna be A-OK. -okay. I mean, we live the scuff, right? We, we do live scuff. We turn on some music in the background while we wait. Okay. But yeah, as usual, just waiting a little bit for people to come in, even though I started this 40 minutes late. <laughs> um, I, I only announced the delay a little bit ago, so I do want to give people a chance to come in if they want to. And, um, yeah, for me to get uh, some more mental preparation, because like I said, sleeping schedules are very difficult. Um, but I didn't want to cancel today, so here I am with the scuff. Um... But we're making it. We're making it. Lots of good stuff planned for today's session of Talk Tuesday with more music theory. Hooray! Yes, more music theory. And, uh, yeah, session two of, of music theory. I, I did not think ever that I would teach this at some point well yeah I, I suppose it is teach I suppose that counts but it's not a formal class or anything but still um and I don't have any formal training in this but you know gotta start somewhere um and I say this, I'm making no pretenses. This is this is not some pre None of these are. Right? Not none of these talk Tuesday. That's why I call them Talk Tuesday and not like I don't know, seminar Saturday or or whatever. This is this is not professional teaching. This is just me having a passion in things and uh sharing this passion and sharing some of the knowledge with people who are interested. Right? So Yeah. In no way professional. Um, but then again, you're getting this for free. <laughs> so. Yeah. Good compromise, I hope. In any case, like I said, waiting a little bit more, a couple minutes. Not too long. Not too long. I don't think it's necessary to wait too long. About quarter two, um, and then uh, I will I will start talking about some more music theory. We'll return to 
Something we've discussed last week, the Circle of Fifths. In my opinion, still one of the most powerful tools in Western music theory. Um, and one that that is, you know, a lot of people really seem to like as well. <laughs> So we'll return to that, and then we'll do, do a deeper dive into um, scales and how scales relate to modes, which is another topic that if you search up music theory on YouTube or, or anywhere else, you will come in contact with it. And may I have thought, what is this? What's going on here? Modes? What, what, what do I, why do I need this? Um, it is just another form of categorizing scales. That's it. <laughs> so there's no big mystery to it. They just come from classical Greek and then church music. Uh, so it's worth talking about it and demystifying it a little bit. Right, because I do think music theory, a lot of music theory is very... Um, arcane. It's very mystical in the way it is presented. Um, starting with, like I said last time, starting with uh, you must follow the quote-unquote rules of music theory. Whatever that means. And uh, you have to you have to um You know, understand everything before you're allowed to do music. Um, or you have to... Or, or, or a lot of music theory is is very... Can seem very esoteric to start off with. Because you get all these weird letters and numbers and... and capital and, and like uppercase, lowercase letters all combined in weird forms and, and such. And... What is going on, right? Um, but really, music theory is not all that... Not all that mystical. It's actually quite mathematical. And it, it all it does is just describe music. And if you listen to music, if you make music, if you sing, if you play, if you create music in any way um or like i said if you just consume music you will probably have heard a lot of the things going on in music theory or described by music theory without knowing that those things had a name and a, a formal description of some sort right so that's that's really all it is that's all it is so I hope I can take away some of the fear and some of the misunderstandings around music theory. Um, and let me just shift a couple tabs around. All right. Um, and get people a bit interested in it. And uh, hopefully, yeah, make them realize, oh wait, music theory is not actually all that harsh. <laughs> all that, um, let me see, is the music still coming through? A bit. I don't want a little bit of music in the background. But, oops. Is not working. I just muted the video. Okay, this is probably the lowest I can. Um, yeah, to make make people realize, oh hey, music theory can can be fascinating and fun. And that's really my goal here, making. Making things, making learning fun again, making, um, 
Finding out new things. Fascinating. All right. So, it is quarter two. Let's go over here. All right. So, like last time, I have the piano keyboard here on the bottom and my black slash or whiteboard on top or effectively the whiteboard so today's topic we'll return to the circle of fifths right um and i will talk about again what it is um and and how we got to it and uh look at how this the circle of fifths can actually help us because i said it's a tool right it's a tool and a tool is supposed to be used and today's topic is a little bit about how we can use the circle of fifths right one of the uh, most common ways of using it right um then we'll also go into scales slash modes right the two are basically the same basically they describe the same basic concept uh, there is different ways of um categorizing things and they have like scales is the more modern concept in a way modes is a more classical concept but again and to do all of this we do need to take a very quick dip into chords i don't want to go too deep into chords chords is really its own big topic um and i i do plan to make a session on chords or at least part of a big session on chords um, but that's not today's topic right it's better to understand scales first before deep diving into chords right because chords are built out of scales so that's like so all right so that's that's uh the plan for today circle of fifths scales modes and a bit quick dip into chords now to start off with i will very quickly define chords and um very quickly just say all right how does this relate right like i said very basic intro chords are um multiple notes played together that's the very basic definition of a chord now i can't really do that on on this keyboard here um because uh because i can only press one button at once however however let me see if i can grab that um no all right Uh, there we go. So this is it's not supposed to be all the way on top. There. This is uh, Chrome Music Lab, right? Um, which is a wonderful tool. I'll just show it real quick, right? They have a whole bunch of fun little apps, fun little, um, yeah, things to play around with. I'm I'm using the shared piano here for the piano uh on on the other screen. And they have one on chords and chords effectively are like I said multiple notes played together. So, you can have say a C major chord. Right? Like so. You can have an F major chord. Like so. Right? So, the basic chord is three notes. It doesn't have to be three. Two notes could 
be a court, but you're missing a bit of information. There is no theoretical maximum to a court, but once you get to like six or seven notes, the court becomes messy and uh, you can't really tell what it is anymore, right? Um, but anywhere between three, four, maybe five notes are are commonly used chords, right? And this goes between major and minor. So you, again, C major, a B major, a G major, and so on. Or you can have the minor versions. That's a G minor, C minor, E minor, and so on. So this is a chord, right? Very, very basically, this is a chord. And it's just multiple notes played together. Now, why do we need... All right. Why do we need this? Because, like I said, chords are built out of scales. And um, a chord is literally, literally just a part of a scale played at once. So it's not just multiple notes, but also usually, right, if you want to do it right, or not want to do it right, that's that's the wrong phrasing. If you want to make it sound a certain way, right, the notes come from a single scale, right? So if you have a certain scale, like a major scale, in the key of, I don't know, A, for instance. It's not playing again. Hooray. Oh. Oops. There we go. <laughs> Misclicked a little bit there. Right? Then you would pick notes that you can find in the scale. For instance... A major chord, right? Um, and that's that's how you typically build a chord out of a scale. So, just as a quick background, right? That that's that's just very quick background info. What are chords? Now, now that this is out of the way, we can dip more into the circle of fifths and into um scales and such so scales first off return to the circle of fifth let me show this thing again so they also have this tool here on chrome music lab and what this tool does is it it shows you it's called arpeggios and an arpeggio is really just a chord that is not played at the same time i just said a chord is played at the same time what this is essentially the notes of a chord, but played separately. So instead of all of these notes played at once, right? Oh, wait, is the... Right, so that's, that's all it is. If you would play these notes together, you would get a C major chord with an extra C on top, right? If you play guitar or so, uh, or rock music, you might know this as a power chord. Um, but that's all this is, right? And it's called an arpeggio because you, you separate the notes of a chord and play them one after the other. How you play them one after the other doesn't matter, right? There are multiple variations. It doesn't matter. Right? They have a lot of variations. This is the most simple one. I'll stick to this. So. And below this arpeggio, we can see something very familiar. We can see our old friend, the circle of fifths. Right? We have here, we start with the C. We move up a fifth to the G, we move up a fifth to the D, from G, right, up another fifth to the A, up another fifth to the E, and so on and so forth, or down here, 
<coughs> sorry we move down a fifth to f down a fifth to b flat down a fifth to e flat and so on and, and complete the circle right on the inside we have the minors so c major corresponds to a minor how that works you will see in a moment this is where scales and modes come into play but for now very quickly circle of fifths as a tool right so if we play this and we go all right i want to change this now i want to change i don't constantly want to play this chord because that's that's relatively boring right for for music so what i want to do is i want to change it up a little bit how do i best do that i go to a and this is the official terminology a closely related chord and a closer related chord is a chord that is next to the chord i'm looking at on the circle of fifths right So that's not a very big shift. Right? Oh, hi. <laughs> yeah. Um, our yeah, arpeggios are... Playing them is, is something else, yes. <laughs> and hi, Kimi. Hi, nice to have you here. Um, but yeah, so if you... You can technically just keep moving around the circle... Right? And you will always hit something that fits nicely as a next step. Simply because the chords or the scales here are closely related. Right? There's never a huge jump between these. Right? It always sounds like smooth steps now if i were to make a bigger jump like like that you can very clearly tell i moved to the opposite side of the circle you can very clearly tell that was a very very sharp break all right it's like two completely different songs and that's what happens if you jump okay that just sounds odd <laughs> if you jump larger distances on the circle of fifths you can even jump something like this it can work but the jump is more obvious right than just a single step try that again it can work Right? But there is a noticeable jump. Right? So, that's the circle of fifths as a tool. And, again, like I demonstrated, it doesn't mean that when you make music, you must always make small steps. You can make bigger jumps. If you think that it fits into the song. Right? Alright. So this is the circle of fifths. As a tool. How does this relate to scales and modes? Let's go back. To. My. whiteboard. Here we are. How does this relate? Well. This is about. Finding out wh why. Why do these steps of fifths create smooth transitions? And why, if I make bigger steps on the circle of fifths, is the jump more obvious? Why? What happens? Right? What's, what's the magic behind it? And the magic behind it is scales. Is how much the scales overlap. So... If I start with a C major scale, which is just, you know, we, we start with that. I go C, B, E, F, G, A, B, 
C, right? That's that's very, very basic. Right, the C major scale. Alright. Um how many octaves? Let me actually hold on very quickly see if I can reduce the number of octaves. So that I have a so that the buttons are just a little bit bigger. I don't need that many. Alright. And one um one step up on the circle of fifths is the G. Right? That's one fifth. Now G major. What are the notes in G major? G A B C E Oops E F sharp G. You may have noticed something already. I'll just write this down here. B A B C D E F sharp. If you look at these two, right? And like I like I said last time, scales don't typically end; they keep going in either direction, right? If you look at these two. D major, D major, a G major. There is a lot of overlap. A lot of the notes are exactly the same. They appear on different locations on the scale, sure. Right? We start on let me mark this, we start on a C in in this scale, and we start on a G in this scale. Right? But the notes themselves are largely the same. Right? There is only one difference, and that is the F and F sharp. That's it. That's the only difference. All the other notes are the same. And that's why when you transition from C major to G major, you don't have to change a lot of notes. You're only changing a single note. And that's why the transition is so smooth, right? The same works if I go, oops, I did not want red. I want it blue there. Same if I go F major, which is one step in the other direction on the circle of fifths. F major, F, probably see that there already. Right? So you see, again, I start on F, G, A, B flat, C, D, E, F. And once again, there is only one difference between a C major and an F major, and that is the B and B flat. And mark where we start. And again, that is the reason why a transition of one step on the circle of fifths is so smooth. Because you're largely remaining in the same general area on the notes, and you're just changing one note to shift the song slightly. Right? To shift it very slightly. And if we... Look at the opposite of a C major, right? The exact opposite of a C major is here, G flat. So let's look at G flat, G flat major. What is a G flat major? I have to check. Starts here, G flat, A flat, B flat, B. Right? C sharp, E sharp, or actually, it's probably more flats. Yeah, this is this is a B flat. This is a C flat. 
technically. Uh, you can't mix sharps and flats in the same scale. That just doesn't work. And then D flat, E flat, F, or G. Uh, that's not actually an F, I think. That might be a G double flat. And then a G flat again. So no matter how we label these, right? A flat, B flat. C flat, uh, where were we? D flat, C flat, right? And then E flat, E flat, F, sure, and then G flat again. So, oops. Um, D flat, E flat, F, E flat, right? So, um, you can see already. That's not even right. Uh, oh no, wait here. F, E flat. I need to check how I'm writing this. There we go. You can see, hopefully, we're starting on the G flat. Here. Um, that basically every single note except for the F is different, right? The F is an overlap but every other note in the scale is different which is why the jump from a C major to a G flat major is so abrupt it doesn't mean you can't do it but the break will be very 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 noticeable simply because you are completely or almost completely shifting notes right to a completely different set. They started on mostly the white keys and now you're shifting to mostly the black keys, so to speak, right? Um, that's, that's what's happening. And so that's how you can see why certain jumps are smoother and why certain jumps are more abrupt or more noticeable. Right? And the circle of fifths, oh wait, I, I didn't see that, sorry about that, I didn't see that the circle of fifths was still up, uh, I need to change that, sorry, yeah, again, <laughs> I, I didn't realize that the whiteboard wasn't up, um, G flat, right, so I'll, I'll do this again, G flat, right, that's where we're starting, A flat, B flat, C flat, B flat, E flat, F, E flat. Right, that's the G flat major. So this, these are the notes I wrote down here. Right, B flat, A flat, B flat, C flat, D flat, E flat, F, back to G flat. And now you can hopefully see, like I said, every single note here is different from the C flat except from F except for the the seventh which is an odd note to have in common with another scale right seventh is one of the most unstable notes um which makes it very useful in some some areas uh jazz for instance relies on the the inherent unstableness of a seventh chord a uh, seventh note but just having the seventh note be in common is mm, <laughs> means that the shift is very, very noticeable, right? You're completely shifting from one set of notes to a different set of notes. And um, yeah, that's, that's what's happening. That's why this jump is much more abrupt than, say, this jump or this jump, right? Again, it doesn't mean you can't do it. You just have to know what's happening, right? You just have to know what effect it creates. It can sound like two completely different songs because that you're, you're using a completely new set of notes, right? So that's the scales and that's what shifting 
means. Now, I'm talking about shifting quite a lot. What, what do I mean by shifting? What I mean is not necessarily key changes. Very important. And that's where we're coming back to chords. I'm not talking about key changes. I'm talking about having a piece of music in a certain key. Say, the key of C major. Right? And you don't want to constantly play the C major chord. That makes for a very, very boring song. Right? Um, let me switch windows again. So, again. That, you could make something like this, but it's not very interesting. Right? If you just constantly have this. Instead, you can look at, alright, what other chords are there that I can put into the song that will fit very nicely into the key of C major? This one will fit. F major will fit. G major will fit. Come back to the C major. Other chords that will fit, E minor will fit, E minor will fit, A minor will fit, right? And then we can come back to C. The reason I didn't play B is because you have to play a B diminished, which is a different type of chord. Again, we'll go into chords in a different session. And I can't do that on this app. It only has major minor. but. You can hopefully see, all right, knowing what key I'm in and knowing the scale and knowing how this works, I can pick a number of chords that fit into these notes. So I can have the C major chord, I can have a D minor chord, an E minor chord, I can have an F major chord, G major chord, A minor chord. Technically, yes, a B diminished, right? This this stands for diminished. Oops. <laughs> diminished. There we go. And then back to the C major. All of these chords use notes that are found in the C major scale. And you can already see the two major chords are the two chords right next to the C. And you can use these two things to combine, right? You can look at the G major and slip a bit of that into a song. You can look at the F major and slip a bit of that into the song, right? And then you can include some other notes, uh, some other... Ah, where, where is my other chords and again so we have here c major fits a major uh, f major fits b major fits and then we have down here you see what's happening the three minor chords that fit the d minor the e minor the a minor they're all grouped right into this pack all of them except for again the b diminished but that's the diminished chord, seventh, weird, we'll go into chords in the next session. So, so if you take all of the um, slices that are bunched up with C major here on the circle of fifths, you can see, oops, All of these fit. Like, I can just randomly press these six here. And I will create music, <laughs> right? I will create something that sounds acceptable. It might not be super interesting.
but it's totally serviceable as long as I resolve back to the sea and that is end back on the sea return home to the sea at the end uh it will feel complete and it won't feel um with having big abrupt changes now i can sneak in something else every now and then And it will work, right? It will work. And understanding scales and the circle of fists will tell you why. Again, if this step, C to G, has one note differing, then C to D will have two notes differing, which is still a very large overlap, right? That's still five notes that they share. C major, D major, share five notes. That's a, that's a lot. That's plenty. And that's why this jump also works. It can work in songs, right? Right? It, it, it can work. <laughs> Um, but the farther you go, the less overlap there is. So, one, two, three, four, five, six. There is no true seven because then you start going back and then you will have, um, or let me think. Depends on how you call it. You'll probably have... Um, none of the notes matching, right? Um, but yeah, so so you can then see. All right, this is basically no overlap here. And the sound can work. It has a certain effect, right? But it's a very special feeling. Where you, where you should know what you're doing, right? You want to include less conventional things, just like in anything cre creative. If you want to do something non-conventional, sure, go right ahead. Just also kind of make sure to understand the rules that you're breaking, right? Um, we talked about this last time as well. But yeah, this is the circle of his as a tool. So you can see, you look at C, Everything bunched up here fits into the scale of C, or the key of C major, and can be used with no trouble in um, in, a, in a song that's keyed on C. By the way, same with A minor. A song that's keyed on A minor has 100% the same notes as C major, and we'll see in a moment why. That's where modes come in. So anything on A minor works as well. Works as well. If I can I can return home, I can resolve back to the A minor. And it will work as well. Alright, so it's the same bunch of six here. Alright, so that's the circle of fifths as a tool. Again. Go to Chrome Music Lab. It's a completely free website with lots of fun, fun little apps like this, and you can just click around, play around, and see what happens, right? Just toy around, train your ear, listen around, and uh, yeah, have fun with it. Now, modes. What are Modes. Modes are, and the reason I want to talk about modes is because um, it comes up in a couple of uh, aspects of music theory. It's not often talked about, and it's really just a subset of scales. Right? It's really just a special group of scales. So if you understand scales, you will understand modes. But if you don't understand scales or have some trouble with them, 
modes might be a stepping stone to understanding scales. Right? So that's why I do want to talk about them a bit. And they come up in things like modulation and uh, modal, um, modal interchanges and such. So they do come up in a couple of aspects and, and concepts here and there. Um, but it's, it's, it's nice to know, and it can be a stepping stone to understanding scales and using scales. So modes. What are modes? Like I said, modes are really just a subset of scales. So scales, like I said last time, and I will say that again here because we're talking about it. Scales are just any collection of notes with some sort of pattern on how you go from one note to the next. Most scales tend to start and end on the same note. So if I start on C, the scale will repeat itself every time I hit another C. So the C major scale, like we had, is defined in what steps I take. So C, then a whole step, D, another whole step, E, half step, F, another whole step, G, whole step, A, whole step, B, and then the half step again, back to the C. So this whole, whole, half, whole, 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 half, is, oops, how we define a major scale, right? I can start this major scale in any key. And as long as I follow the pattern, I will get a major scale in that key. I can go A, right? Whole step, B, whole step, C sharp, half step, D, whole step, E, whole step, F, whole step, or F sharp, sorry, whole step, G sharp, and then a half step, back to A. And that was the A major, right? So that's how we define scales. Now, a scale does not always have to have seven notes, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B is seven notes. You can have things like the pentatonic scale. C, D, F, G, A, C, D, and so on. That's five notes. You can have other scales. You can have, let me see if I can still get this, the blue scale. No. Ah, I'm not getting it. There we go. That's the blue scale. C, E flat, F, and then you get this really weird where you have both F and F sharp in one, and then G, B flat, C. That's the blues scale, right? If you listen to blues, uh, this will come up very, very often. And uh, when they, when when musicians improvise in blues, they will often build upon the blues scale, right? One, two, three, four, five, six. That's six notes. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then we we return to the next octave. So that's scales can be a lot, and there are even scales that don't repeat on the octave. That exists as well, right? Some very rare scales or rarely used scales that continue past the octave with their pattern, where the pattern doesn't hit the same note again when you go up. Um, all sorts. There are theoretically an infinite amount of scales, right? Because you can just combine whatever patterns you can find. Um, now, that's scales. Modes are a very specific subset of scales, and modes are useful because they several of them tend to be used 
relatively often. And they are just names for sp specific types of scales, right? So we have, for instance, the name major scale, right? Which is, uh, use colors, whole step, whole step, half step, right? Whole step, whole step, whole step, and then half step back up to the octave. We also have the harmonic minor scale, which is the most common minor scale. There are several, um, and you will see why in a bit. Um, but the harmonic minor scale, so the harmonic minor is the, the minor you hear most often, and also the minor that was present on the um, the circle of fifths we had just. So, C, so then we have a whole step to a D, a half step to an E minor, a whole step to an F, whole step to a G, half step to an A flat, or not E minor, E flat, sorry, whole step to a B flat, and then another whole step to a C. So, uh, this is whole step, half step, right here, whole step, right, from E flat to F, F to G, whole step, G to A flat, half step, A flat to B flat, whole step, and then B flat to C, another whole step. So this is the pattern you get for the harmonic minor scale. And you can have a lot of different scales. You can have, for instance, the whole tone scale, which is also used sometimes in music. So which is literally just whole step. That's it. That's that's all it is. It's just a bunch of whole steps. That's why it's called the whole tone scale. Right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. That's it. That's the pattern. Right? We have the blues scale that I just introduced. The blues scale, right? See, and then you get one and a half steps to an E minor. Uh, e flat. I I need to get my names right. Sorry. E flat. Then a full step, a whole step to an F. Half step to an F sharp. Half step to an G. And then another one and a half steps to a B flat. And then a whole step to um the C again. Right. So you get. Let me pick another color. There, so you get this whole plus half step to start out with, right? And then you get another whole step, then you get two half steps, and then you get uh, it's not pressing again. Oh yeah, you get another whole and half step, right? And then another whole step. So that's the pattern for the blue scale. And we can just find more and more and more. Like I said, technically an infinite amount of scales. Now, how do modes come into this? <laughs> These are just a couple of examples, but how do modes come into this? Now, what, what are modes? Modes are a set of scales that you can build all with the same notes. Can all be built from the same notes? Now, let me write down the 
E F G C and let me continue once for another octave C E F G A C there now C major start on C major uses these seven notes, right? C, D, E, F, G, A, B, and then we go back to the C. So the C major is on the key of C major, or can be found within the C major scale. Hopefully obvious, right? That's where the name comes from. But we also saw that the A minor corresponds to the C major. We'll, we'll look at this right now, A minor. And if we only play the notes that we find, only the white keys, that's the A minor. Look at it, harmonic minor scale. Let's, let's check. A, a whole step to a B. My mouse is not cooperating, sorry. Half step, right, to a C. Whole step to a D, another whole step to an E, a half step to an F, another whole step to a G, and the final whole step back to the A. Exactly this pattern up here, the minor scale, harmonic minor scale pattern on A uses the exact same notes as the major scale on C. Only the white keys in this case, right? Makes it easier to see. Um, okay, so we found this is the major and this is the harmonic minor. Are there any others? Are there others? Like if we start on a D or if we start on an F, do we also get a scale that, that only uses these notes? And uh, the solution or the answer, of course, is yes, yes, we do. That's why no modes exist. And that's why there are seven modes, are exactly seven modes. And these modes have names. You don't need to know these names. I'm going to tell them to you anyway. If you want to learn them, you can learn them. If not, don't don't worry about it. Right? So the C, we have the C, and then we go to a so the C major is also called the C. Let, let me see how I best write this. Uh in this case, Ionian. I I O oh, Ionian. Right? And then we go to a D. That's also a scale, right? One that's not often used, not as often as major and minor, but it is a scale. We get this D Dorian. Then you get E, oops, right, and this is the E, Phrygian. These names come from Greek music, right, old classical ancient Greek music, um, and, and such, and, and church music, and so, which was built on a lot of Greek terminology. Don't worry too much about it. I will give you a mnemonic afterwards. Um, but for now, let's continue. F, right? That's also a scale, and that's the F Lydian. Then we have the G. Right. 
as the G mixolydian. Then we have the A, right, which is the harmonic minor, but it does have its own name as well. Aeolian. And then let me let me see if I can move this up just a little bit. I'm running out of space down here. Hooray for oops, hooray for technology. Awesome. Ha. Space. Doesn't have to be crammed. And then the B. The scale on B is it's very weird. It's not used very often. You don't hear it very much. But it does exist and it is a thing. So it sounds very odd, right? And doesn't really feel like feels like it resolves. But it is a scale scale that is used, a mode that that technically or not technically it definitely exists. And that's the Locrian. So Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian. There is a mnemonic for this. I don't particularly like modes. Oh, hey, Mora, hi. Uh, welcome. Thanks for the follow. Welcome to the guild. Hope you'll join us for many adventures. How are you doing? I'm I'm doing well actually. I'm uh having a blast explaining music theory. <laughs> so if that's your jam, you're you're free to, to stay. If not, I completely understand. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Thank you. I'm I'm glad you like it. Um But yeah, this is what I'm doing right now is Talk Tuesday, where I uh just talk about a a topic of interest, really some some sort of um yeah a, a topic that I'm I'm interested in and that I would like to share with others and to show others that uh, learning can be fun <laughs> and and to teach them a little bit about various things and right now we're in the middle of music theory so uh, that's that's a thing. <laughs> But yeah, how how are you doing? How are you doing? <laughs> well, if you love music, then that's that's also amazing. You know, music theory can help you appreciate music a little bit more and understand what's actually happening. Maybe why you like a particular piece of music or why you don't like another piece of music. Um, mm, nice, nice. Getting home is always nice. Oh, hey, Seal. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> nice to see you here as well. Um, yay, knowledge. Yes, exactly. I've, I've actually been uh, talking for an hour on this already, roughly. <laughs> um, but yeah, basically what I'm talking about is um, scales and modes, which are uh, a specific type of scales. Um, I'm, I'm doing very well. I, I actually managed to sleep quite a bit um before this it got a bit delayed um the the talk tuesday got a bit delayed but here we are right um <laughs> so yeah talking about scales and and modes so i just introduced uh, the concept of modes which are um a collection of scales right scales just being um, a pattern on how you move from mode uh, from from note to note, right? Like whole step, whole step, half step, and so on. Major scale, whole step, whole step. Oops, whole step, half step, and so on. Whole step, whole step, whole step, half step, right? So this is just patterns, and I was pointing out that you can have a collection of scales which all use exactly the same notes. Um, and they form a set of seven scales that have specific names and that relate to each other. That's uh, where I was right now. So if you start on C, and C major has all the white keys, 
And if you just start on a different note, you get a different scale, but that also uses the exact same notes. All right. Oops. That's... Yeah, like that <laughs> a bit. And uh, that's, yeah. That's the collection of of these scales. So the only difference or, or the thing that binds modes is all modes use the same notes. Only difference is the starting note. That's really it. That's, that's all there is to it, right? And I was saying these are the names of the nodes, Ionian, Dorian, Phrygian, Lydian, Mixolydian, Aeolian, Locrian, and the mnemonic to memorize or to help you with this, I don't particularly like modes a lot. There, that's, that's the names. Now, you won't hear this a lot in, in pop music, right? Pop music tends to use only major and harmonic minor, which is Ionian, Aeolian, respectively. Um, but a lot of other music, right? Even classical music. Classical music uses some of the other modes. Uh, jazz, especially, um, uses several other modes, like Lydian or maybe Phrygian and such. Um, or, or Mixolydian and so on. And you, you do find these modes used in music. And these modes are steps you can take. So to return all the way to the beginning, so I'm sorry for those who just joined. <laughs> um, I, I did talk about some other stuff using the... Hello? Ah, there we go. So using the circle of fifths as um, our baseline again. So I did say if you start on a C, for instance, you can use. Yeah, exactly. Pretty wheel. <laughs> I introduced this in the last session. This is actually our second session on, on um, music theory. So. Uh, once I upload the VODs, if you are interested, you can look at that. And I will talk about these topics again at some point. Um, right, this is not a one and done. So if you really are interested, uh, you're very welcome to participate. <laughs> it's not a color wheel. It's the circle of fifths. So what happens is you have, you start on a key and then you move a fifth in one direction. And you get the next E, in this case G, you move another fifth, you get the D, you move another fifth, you get the A, and so on and so forth all the way around, and it works downward as well. You start C, move a fifth down, you get the F, move another fifth down, you get the B flat, move another fifth, you get the E flat, and so on and so forth. Right? Yeah, this is this is a Chrome Music Lab, by the way. Chrome Music Lab, I'm just gonna show it real quick. They have a lot of very neat little uh, apps and such that you can use to just play around with music. Um, I, I really recommend it if you just enjoy messing around. And this has very, uh, very ideally has the uh, circle of fifths on here. So as I said, you have the circle of fifths and you have the minor as well, right? A minor. And this works the exact same way. You move up a fifth, up a fifth, up another fifth, and so on, or down a fifth, down a fifth, down a fifth. Now, if you've remember back to modes, you will now know why C major and A minor occupy the same slice because of modes. Right? The C major, C Ionian, 
uses the exact same notes as the A Aeolian, A harmonic minor, which is why they occupy the same slice. But the same can be said for the D Dorian, the E Phrygian, the F Lydian, the G Mixolydian, and the B Locrian. All of these technically um, are on the same slice. So you could do this circle of fifths. Let me add yet another layer. So you can do the circle of fifths technically for all of these, right? So you can have the C Ionian or the C major, right? You can have the D uh, Dorian, you can have the E Phrygian is R here. You can have the F Lydian, you can have the G Mixolydian, you can have A minor, Right or a Aeolian. Same with here, Ionian. And you can have the B Locrian. And all of these occupy the same slice on the circle of fifths. And then you could move a fifth up. You could have G Ionian. And then you could have the A Dorian. The um B Phrygian. You could have the C uh c lydian you could have the d mixolydian you could have the e aeolian oops and then <clears throat> because we moved up to a g we need to add the sharp f sharp locrian right because the f sharp is part of this set of notes that's what differentiates this set of notes all white keys from this set of notes with the F sharp instead of the F. And you can continue this down the line. Every single one of these has all the seven modes. Right? So we move from C up to G. Ah, come on, click. <laughs> and let me, let me start down here, right? And then we can move to the next one. That's Dorian. And then... That's Phrygian. And so on. We're just starting on a different set of notes, but the scales, the modes, still hold. They, they still... Uh, they're still the same. The patterns are still the same. Right? So that's modes. Molds have um, a very a couple of very very neat properties, and this is diving a little bit deeper into it. Um, the reason this subset of of scales is often used, seen together, and is given like this this extra labeling of modes is because they have these extra shared properties. So if we look at let me order them in a very certain way. So let me go uh, Lydian, F Lydian, C Ionian, G Mixolydian, right? Uh, then we get the D, the D Dorian, we get the uh, A Aeolian, we get the E. Region, and then we get the B Locrian. All right. With this order, you can see a couple of properties of the modes. And not coincidentally, not coincidentally, very, very important, this order of the modes is exactly this order right here on the circle of fifths. So, We've come full circle, ha ha ha, <laughs> back to the circle of fifths when talking about modes, right? And this particular ordering of modes. Now, let me show you, and this is where modes become magical, right? This is, this is what I really like about them, and this is why I find them so fascinating. Start with F Lydian. 
Full step. To a G. Full step. To an A. Full step. To a B. Half step to a C. Full step to a D. Full step to an E. Half step to an F. Right? So, one, three, half step, then one, half step again. Right? C Ionian is just a C major. We had that, which is whole, whole, half. Actually, let me write all of this a bit neater because then you will actually see what's going on. So let's, oops, here, whole, whole, half, whole, whole, come on, half, right? And then the major scale, Ionian, is whole whole half whole 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 half if you've ever done any sort of music uh playing an instrument or so um you may have heard this whole whole half whole 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 half and so on right because that's the major scale and and that's what you need to do now mixolydian g mixolydian is whole step to an a whole step to a b Half step to a C, full step to a D, full step to an E, half step to an F, and then the whole step back to the G. So, full, full, half, full, full, half, full. And if you're paying attention, you might start to see something emerge right let's check dorian d dorian whole step to an e half step to an f whole step to a g whole step to an a whole step to a b half step to a c and whole step again to a d And hopefully now, you will see a pattern emerge from this. Right? We also had the minor scale, um, which is here, A. Whole step to a B, half step to a C, whole step to a D, whole step to an E. Then we get another half step to an F, whole step to a G, whole step to an A, right? So this just continues. Whole, whole, half. Whole whole, right? And I think by now the pattern should be clear. You can fill in the rest without checking on the on the keyboard because the pattern has already emerged. Right? Like so. And then the Locrian, which is the final rather odd one. Like so, get the half step here, and three full steps. Incidentally, the Locrian is a mirror image of the Lydian, right? Just a fun little fact. But you can see here how the half steps move one down every two scales and that's a pattern that is a fixed pattern this is this is not coincidence none of this is coincidence really 
If you arrange the modes by the circle of fifths, you keep going up by fifths, you will get this pattern of the half steps moving down like this. Right? And that's another point where the circle of fifths is a powerful tool because it ties into this. Now, why is this? Why does this matter? Why do you need this? What, what does this do, right? Great, we've arranged the modes. We, we found half steps. What does this do? This is where music theory ties into music as art. Music as science combines with music as art. This is one instance where that happens. Music as science simply describes scales, describes tones, describes how notes relate to each other, and so on. Music as art is about the emotional side. Right? What do people feel when they hear music? And this is one such instance where the two start to combine. You have up here, bright, and down here, dark. And if you have a Lydian scale, a Lydian mode, the music will sound very bright. Then you move to the Ionian, which is the normal major scale that sounds still very bright, which is why major scale music or uh, music in major keys sounds happy, sounds uplifting. It sounds bright, yeah. Then you move down further steps and you get darker and darker until you hit the Aeolian, which is the minor scale, which is why music in minor keys sounds a bit more sad or melancholic, right? A bit darker. And then you can go even darker with the Phrygian. And then you get to the Locrian, which is difficult to make music with, right? Um, but it's still there. If you want some really dark sounds, you can use the Locrian mode. And it's difficult for me to, to play examples on this keyboard down here because I would have to click around and that's like FPS player level of, of accuracy playing on this keyboard down here because I have to click with the mouse. But you can listen to some examples, maybe. If you look on YouTube, right, music and different modes, um, and, and find examples of music in different modes, <laughs> you, you don't want to hear that. No. <laughs> um, then, then you can tell, all right, a, a song that's written more up here, Lydian, Ionian, Mixolydian. Um, yeah, exactly. Oops, I just drew. Right, will sound very bright, whereas the further down you go, right, Aeolian, Phrygian, maybe even Locrian, right, if you do find songs, there are very few songs with Locrian in them, but they do exist, they will sound very, very dark, very dark in the sense of, like, dark emotions, right, um, melancholy, sadness, and, and so on, and bright is like happy emotions, right, so, so this is one portion where music science and music art start to combine, start to come together. And it is made visible by music theory. Okay? So you can see how these emotions are connected to the tools we use to make music. And that's really what, <laughs> what I, I hope to convey. Like I said, although in the first session, music theory is not a straitjacket. It's not telling you music must look like that. It's a safety net. It describes how music looks. It gives you very helpful tools like the circle of fifths that we had, the, the colorful wheel, like the modes that we discussed today right, to help you produce um, or interpret, right? That's also a thing, right? Producing and interpreting music are both 
um, two sides of the same coin, um, with a certain emotional impact. Because at the end of the day, music is art, and you want to evoke certain emotional reactions with music. And right? that's, that's the whole point of art, really. Right? Um, but how do you do that? How out of the infinite scope of possible stringing together and combining of all possible sounds and notes, do you create something that actually produces an emotion that you want to produce. Well, you have tools for that. And the modes show you one way of having music either sound brighter and happier or sound darker and sadder. Right? And that's one way to do it. So that's really the synthesis of, of all of the first two sessions that we had. The circle of fifths, right? Arranging scales on a in a very specific pattern. And we have seen several uses of that, right? We have seen when reading music, it is very helpful because it tells you the number of sharps or flats that you can have. And um for uh adding chords songs or looking at chords and songs and seeing oh is this transition smooth or is this transition abrupt right again because it comes from was this the right one to yeah the uh it comes from the circle of fifths right um if you move only one step the transition is very smooth if you move several steps five or six the transition is very abrupt right um i'll i'll demonstrate that again um so we have like something like this this transition is relatively smooth right and i can jump here And it still sounds okay. And I can come back, resolve to the C. And all of these, because they're so tightly packed in this wedge, they fit with each other. But what if I make a bigger jump? Right. It can work, but the jump is very, very obvious. And this jump is even more obvious. Right? So these are starting to sound disconnected, like different types of different songs. And that's again something that the circle of his as a tool gives you. Right? And you can physically see these two keys are close together. That's why they fit with each other. That's that's literally what the circle of his is saying. And it goes much further than that. That is one use of it. Another use is then arranging the, the modes that we found into a specific pattern of that then corresponds to a scale of brighter emotions and darker emotions, or brighter sound and darker sound. And um, yeah, that's, that's really uh, just another tool in, in your arsenal if you, if you want to... Um, create or interpret music. So that's why modes can be useful. They're not talked about very often, and the way they're talked about when, when people teach music theory is often makes them very, very mysterious and like, oh, this is, this is very old stuff. This is like old classic ancient greek and church music and uh it's, it's very arcane and uh, it's not actually it's it's quite mathematical if you think about it and uh really uh very um like it, it forms nice patterns there are more patterns actually there are even more patterns here okay somehow oh there are even more patterns that you can find with the modes 
um, that I won't go into now because it would be too much, right? Um, but yeah, that's it's it creates a useful tool, right? and that's that's really what I want to demonstrate. That music theory gives you very helpful tools to understand music on a deeper level and see if you want to write music or if you want to sing or create music uh, or interpret music or even if you're just listening to music and saying, oh, this song sounds very happy. It's probably because it has, it's in, in a major scale or maybe even in Lydian or Mixolydian, right? Um, or it has a, uh, it sounds very dark, so it's probably in a minor minor key like Aeolian or maybe even Phrygian or so, right? And that's um that's one way to, to help you appreciate music on a deeper level. Um one nice example of this in practice, if you want to listen to it, is music from The Sims. And I'm not kidding. The very first Sims game had really amazing music. I mean, the later games also have good music, right? But the first Sims games had one particular song that combines a lot of awesome music theory. And there's a dude on YouTube who describes this. Let me see if I can find him. I think his name is uh, something Cornell. Uh, music theory, like the university, I like like the school. It's probably current coincidence. Um, uh, let me let me see if I can find him. I'm not gonna show the video here because I've already been going quite long. But if you do want to. Uh, Charles Cornell, is that him? Yes, it is. Charles Cornell. Um, and it's a video called The Sims Soundtrack Cheated. A bit clickbaity, the title, but it's, uh, The Sims Soundtrack Cheated. Uh, by Charles Cornell. And he doesn't explain the theory behind it so much um, as he just demonstrates what The Sims music does. It's one particular piece of The Sims music, the building theme number one. Doesn't really have a title. Um, I put the link to the video in the chat. You can check it out later if you want. Um, and the, he explains how this particular piece of music uses both the Mixolydian mode and the circle of fifths in combination to just create yeah just a, a beautiful piece of music that does what it's supposed to do right and um if you if you do want to see this in action see the circle of fifths in action and see the modes in action uh on on a piece of music that i personally really enjoy as well uh check out this video Seriously, it, it, uh, now that you've looked at modes and such, uh, circle of fists, and hopefully understand it a little bit better, um, you can give that video a watch and see, see a practical example. Right. That's what I wanted to end with. So, really, again, music theory is all about giving you tools to understand and appreciate and create music in a deeper level. Um, and that's it for this week, actually. Yeah, I've been going for about one and a half hours. Um, questions. I don't know if there are any questions, but uh, I'll ask anyway. So are there, are there any questions? Any things that either about what we talked about today or other things you are interested in that... that you might want me to uh, elaborate on a bit. Um, I will say the topic for next week is going to be chords. 
All right, we've looked at scales this week, a deeper dive into scales. And then next week, we'll look into chords, which are really just several notes from a scale played at the same time, <laughs> right? So now that we've looked at scales, we can then look at chords um, on, a, on a deeper level. Um, but yeah, any, any questions, any comments, any lingering doubts, any insecurities? What instruments did I play? I actually only took lessons in piano. Um, I started piano when I was five or something like that um, and played it intermittently every now and then. Um, took lessons in it and such. I haven't played it in a long time uh, because also mental issues and such. Um, but yeah, that's that's the one instrument I had formal training in. Um, I also did a lot of singing. Also been singing for basically my entire life. Um, but I have picked up other instruments here and there. So I know how to play some guitar. I have my uh, hurdy-gurdy that... I actually own a hurdy-gurdy <laughs> that I've played a bunch um and recorder for instance just just whatever kind of cheap instruments we had lying around at home or that i could just buy for two euros at a store or something right um that wouldn't really uh burn a hole into my wallet so just just experimenting around with with all sorts of different instruments here and there or if the school had like the music room at school had like various instruments lying around and whenever we had we were allowed to use it for band practice so i just i don't know tried out different things um but yeah that's that's basically so mainly piano i'm mainly a piano person piano and singing but uh i have a bit of knowledge here and there of other instruments practical knowledge so yeah, and then music theory is also um, because I played in the school jazz band for many years and I wanted to understand it more, like how, how to improvise, how, to, how, what, how jazz actually works. Um, and jazz has a lot of very fascinating music theory in it. Um, so that's what led me to read up on music theory and to, to try and understand the whole thing on a deeper level. Um, yeah, that's my musical history. Uh, oh yeah, if there are no other comments or questions, then I guess, uh, I can call it for tonight. Yeah, and uh, also get something to eat. <laughs> Haven't eaten yet. Um, but all right. So uh, I hope you learned a little bit of something. And um, again, this is only partially about teaching the actual subject at hand. If you didn't understand too much about music theory, that's okay. It is a complex topic. And unless you actually do music in some capacity it might be a bit difficult to to find your way into it um i still encourage you to to look into it if you if you really like music even if just listening to music right um because again it it can help you appreciate music uh, more and it can help you find other music that you might enjoy or avoid music that you might not enjoy right based on what you already like right from a from a theoretical perspective um but i hope you you found uh this at least a little bit fascinating because that's really the goal of what i'm trying to do here show you that learning things and even like scientific things like this can be fascinating can be interesting um, and to find a joy for learning um if you do have any feedback i'm very open to feedback uh really i I really only know how to teach in a classroom setting. Um, so this is kind of new to me. 
if you have feedback, if you want to say anything, do so uh, either here or on on Twitter or so that's the best way you can reach me. Um, and yeah, I that's it for this week. So like I said, next week topic still going to be music theory, going to go into chords. Um, and yeah, what else? I will have another stream, 100% will have another stream on Thursday, which is going to be a collab. Collab between me and my VTuber brother. I'm very excited for that. We're going to play some Power Wash Simulator. Uh, that's going to be at 2 p.m. PST, 11 p.m. CST, uh, or whatever your equivalent time zone is. And... Yeah, that's that's all I have to say for now. Right. So thank you very much to everyone who came by. Um, I hope this was enjoyable to a certain degree. <laughs> and um, let's look for someone to raid. See who's online. There's not a lot of people are online at this time. Huh. Yeah, really not not too many. Oh wait, no, Twitch lied to me. There are a lot of people online. What's happening? Um <laughs> Alright, let's see who is raidable. Uh Is okay, it's gone for two hours, but I think it might still continue for a little bit. Um, but this one gone for an hour. Okay, we will raid a smaller streamer, but someone who comes by my stream very often. So, uh, why not return? The support. We are going to raid uh, Goliath, who is a spider VTuber, right? A lot of spider VTubers around now. Um, let me get the name right. Underscore there. Uh, Goliath is playing Elden Ring right now, so something a bit different to, uh, yeah, focus on, I guess. For uh, the raid, or after uh, a big session on music theory. Um, but yeah, I hope you had fun. I hope you will uh, join me next time. Join me on Thursday <laughs> when I do Power Wash and the Clap. And um, yeah, I hope to see you again soon. Take care and bye bye.